Hello everyone, this is Steven from the Even Steven channel and today we are taking a look at the A Uberti. Uberti, we're looking for El Patron. So does this say cattle? Uh, these old West reproduction revolvers, sometimes their nomenclature gets a little weird. Um, I'm going to simplify it and say this is the Uberti. El Patron, model number 4125. Uberti, world's finest replicas. Well, I guess that's true because they're the only manufacturer of replicas because my understanding is both Pieta and Uberti are owned by the same company. They're all owned by Beretta. Beretta owns Uberti, Pieta, um, Beretta owns Benelli and Franchi. And Cimarron and Taylor's, they get their guns from those companies. So Beretta owns everything. So they are the world's finest makers of replica Old West revolvers because they are the only manufacturer of replicas. So, again, coming in a relatively cheap cardboard box. In fact, made in Italy. In fact, this one barely made it to, to my FFL. Um, this part right here, this is this had ripped off. It just kind of came a, a, a little beat up when it got to my gun dealer. We have a uh, manual which is not specific to this gun, to this model. It's kind of a generic single action army manual. Ah, here we go. Hmm, you know, this glare doesn't do it justice. Sometimes you can't see how nice of a gun this looks, to be honest. The L Patron 9mm Luger? What is that? What is that? I'm going put this down for a second. Get this box out of the way. I will probably never use this box again. Um, it's falling apart already. Uh, I'm going to put my gun in something else. I'm never going to use this box again. It's so flimsy. So I'm going to tell a story real quick. Very quick. As quick as I can. I did a, a video on my Cimarron Model P that had two cylinders. It had a um, Colt 45 cylinder and a 45 ACP cylinder. And even though uh, I did technically have the 45 ACP cylinder, I actually sold that off. I sold all of my Old West reproduction guns. Because I'm getting sick of paying and finding and looking for 45 Colt ammo. It's like a dollar a round. And there was a time, you know, a year or two ago, where I was paying $60 a box. I got tired of it. I sold all my guns. All my old West reproduction guns. I had an 1873. I had an 1866. I had a Henry rifle. I had a Cimarron Model P. All in 45 Colt. I kind of just sold them off at a loss. Just to, you know, take that money and pay it towards my credit card, which I... Accumulated a little bit too much debt because I bought all those guns. <laughs> but I saw something, I think, on Uberti's website that they are now offering Colt Single Action Army Reproduction, which is this is, this is a reproduction of the Colt Single Action Army in 9mm Luger. And that interests me a little bit. And I was like, ooh, well, I won't have to look for special ammo. I could just take the same ammo I'm using my semi-automatic pistols and put in this gun. So that was very attractive to me and I just couldn't resist the opportunity. So I sold my Glock 19, got a decent price on that, and used the money to buy this. So let's go through the features back to front. Uh, first of all, I, just, I really do love the overall appearance of this gun. I'm not a huge sucker for color case hardening, however it is on here, it's on the frame, I do like it, I think it looks very attractive. And I'm trying to show the angles that show it off has a, I don't know what kind of wood, but has a checkered wood grip. I actually really like this. A lot of Colt Single Action Armies have very smooth grips, and I believe the intention is to let the gun rotate in your hand a little bit so you can cock it with your thumb. We'll just very quickly see if you check that. Notice how these cylinders are numbered. Want to keep track of which you know one 
If you want to do the cowboy load, you know, you put one cartridge in here. I think it's from one to six. Oh, it's going backwards. Uh, I thought it'd go the other way. I'm not sure why it's numbered like that, to be honest. Anyway, my point was getting at is, uh, I think I believe the intention of the Cold Single Action Army is that when you fire, the gun's going to kind of rotate in your hand a little bit and they use that to thumb the hammer. Uh, so they don't always have checkered wood grips on it. However, I think this looks very attractive. Hammer. Looks like a, like a standard reproduction hammer. Trigger guard, trigger. Again, the color case hardening. It looks very nice. Basically just the frame. And just this part of the frame is color case hardened. And I think it looks pretty good. It looks like, uh, is the hammer color case hardening too? It looks like it is. Yeah, it is. The hammer and the frame. There is some patent information. That is patent information for the Colt Single Action Army, which um, has expired, but you can put it on there. Cylinder, rear sight. The rear sight is very much just this um, trough. Sight picture is very minimal, and I'll tell you it's very difficult to get a good, to accurate sh accurately shoot this gun at distance. However, it is, you know, correct. Oh, one thing about the hammer I forget to mention, that this is a modern combination. This is a free-floating firing pin that physically moves on the original, authentic Colt Single Action Army that was fixed. So why would Uberti change that? Because, well, if you have this all the way forward and you have a live chamber on this gun and you smack this for any reason, possibly drop it, the gun will go off. And that is absolutely a safety hazard, which is why the cowboy load exists. Which is why you put in one cartridge, one, don't put a cartridge, get number two, three, four, five, six, pull back on the hammer, rotates that one more, one more cylinder, one more chamber, one more rotation of the cylinder, and then you will have five rounds, and the hammer is now on an empty chamber. That looks like the, uh, Serial number there, a partial serial number. This is the what's that cylinder release spring or cylinder release button, which is a uh, later, I believe, a later Colt single action feature that the original Colt single action army was like a screw, and it was very difficult to get in and out. The serial number repeated, however, this is with the full serial number is UX0445. On this gun, it is just uh, part of it. El Patron. Some information. Stoger. This is imported by Stoger. Made by Uberti in Italy. So very nice how they're trying to keep those things on the underside so you can't um, see it all that easily. Any information on this side? No. This is a five and a half inch barrel. El Patron, 9mm Luger. It has, I think, a more modern ejection rod. I think this is, a, well, I think this part right here is plastic anyway. But, uh, you know, to eject empty cases, you hit this ejector rod here, this button right here. And I believe this shape is a more, it's a later um, styling of the Colt Single Action Army, not the original one. I think this was more of a teardrop. In the original, and this is kind of a generation two or generation three or something, something, something. For some reason, this says B1. No idea what that means, and it looks like very hard to show this. An Uberti proof mark right here, or the Uberti logo right there. So what do we got here? Like I said, this is the a Uberti El Patron. And this is a Colt single action on reproduction and new for 2022. Uberti is selling these. And I just got one really quick, that front sight, that relatively large uh, shark fin-like front sight. The El Patron has been around for a while, I think about 10 years. And this is supposed to be a nicer variation of the Colt single action army. I think what Uberti is trying to offer is a little better fit and finish, a little more refinement and care going to these guns. 
Some of the Cimarron guns can be had for as little as $400 to $500. This one comes in more like six or $700. So it's a little more attention to detail, a little more fit and finish, and I think it does show. This is extremely smooth. I guess I can drop fire it. And of course, if you wanted to fan it, you could. It would fire that way. It feels pretty smooth. This is noticeably more smooth than my Cimarron Model P. And it's just, yeah, it's just a, a gun that Uberti has been offering for a long time, chambered in a cartridge that's a little more uh, easily available, or a little more common, a little cheaper, a little easier to get. It has some weight to it. Oh, I forget the, I didn't weigh the overall weight of it, but <laughs> surprisingly enough, I took the cylinder out, and let's, why not do that now? Let's go over some of the operation of this gun. If you were going to load it, you put it at half cock. That allows the cylinder to spin freely. You would load the cartridges in one at a time. One, two, three, four, five. You do the cowboy load, you five. Uh, you fire off five, six rounds, whatever. Then you open it back up, put it at half cock, and you use the ejector. And load it or leave it the way it is. Now to assemble this, you have to leave it at half cock, half cock, push on the takedown button. It's a little stiff, it's a little tight in here. These El Patron revolvers are supposedly hand fitted and are a little tight. That comes out, and this, make sure this is open, and this kind of just comes out. Now this felt particularly hefty to me, and I weighed this, and this cylinder by itself weighs 10 ounces, over 10 ounces. I don't know why these are numbered, um, I don't think that's necessary, but that's an interesting touch. If I could show it, you can see that shoulder there, that is where the 9mm casing indexes, or you know, head spaces. And strangely enough, it sticks out a little bit spent casing. You you it actually sticks sticks out a little more than I thought it was going to. I thought this casing was going to go all the way in and be flush with the with the cylinder, but actually no, it sticks out a little bit. Noticeable amount. Interesting. You know some of the inside. So the reason that you have to have this at half cock to disassemble it is because if you don't the arms going to be the, the hands. This arms going to be the way. So this is full cock. That hand comes up. This arm comes out. Have it all the way down. That hand still up. So that's be at half cock. Notice how the firing pin sticks out just a little bit. If you didn't have that free-floating firing pin and you smack the back of that hammer, the gun would go off. Mm, I just I just love me some of these old old West reproduction guns. I don't I don't always like paying for the ammo, which is why I got this. Hmm, is that gonna come out? Hmm, that's not gonna come out. We gotta get it out. So back at half cock, cylinder back in. Again, this gun is very tight. It's newer. And it doesn't quite want to go in, again, because it's so tight and it is hand fitted, supposedly. I'm going to go off camera for a second and get this back in. Come on. Got it. Very tight. Let's get that spent casing out. Nice. I love that. I love that. Hope you're enjoying this video because I'm enjoying making it. So for all that talk, how does the gun shoot? Well, I'm going to be honest. When I first got it, it was kind of tight. Um, I felt like as I was doing this, sometimes the cartridges would be rubbing against this kind of back plate. So the cartridges would kind of be binding against the back plate of this revolver, which I've now kind of covered up. Uh, so the gun was very tight when I first got it. 
And honestly, it was not 100% reliable. And I believe the problem was there was gunk, there was oil in this free-floating firing pin. And because there was oil in here, it wasn't flying the way it's supposed to be flying. And we pulled the trigger, it's supposed to go like that. And what was happening is, I, I, I have cartridges here to show it, is I believe that because there was still oil and gunk in here, this was flying off in random directions. See this properly? So this is two firing pin hits. The first one is like right there. It was not in the center. The second one was. Every time I had, when I first got this gun, I, like every cylinder would have something like this. This would happen. But every time I went around the second time, it would always go off. And again, right here, back, see how you have this one hit right here? That's not even the primer. That's completely off. And the second time, went off. So I believe what happened was there was so much gunk and oil in this free-floating firing pin that it was kind of flying off in random directions. I don't know how far this can move. I mean, it's got some play to it. And it wasn't always traveling the way it was supposed to travel. However, the more I shot it, the less it happened. I actually went in here, went inside here, where this hole is, and I actually cleaned it out because there was so much oil building up in there. In fact, I, should get to, I can see a little more now than was before. See, kind of right below that hole, there's oil building up because there was oil coming out of this firing pin. The more I shot it, the better it got. So that was great. That was great. And the more I shot, the more reliable it got. Great. Now, I expected that 9mm, and by the way, I was shooting this ammo, 124 grain, 9mm, which is, you know, not nothing, but compared to something like 357 Magnum, I expect this to be a pipsqueak cartridge that barely made the gun move. However, I was, I guess, pleasantly surprised that the gun recoils kind of like any other 9mm handgun. That is enough. It's not overwhelming, but it's not like shooting a 22. The gun does recoil, and that kind of surprised me. I thought it was gonna be like I almost expected to be like nothing, like a 22. However, it kicks with enough recoil to make me feel like I'm doing something. So I like that. I think it's fun to shoot. Most of the time when I was shooting, I would kind of hold it two hand, and I would cock the hammer like this. Now you can't hold the trigger down and go like that. However, I was at a public, I was at an indoor shooting range, and I didn't think the range, uh, safety, uh, range safety officers would like that, so I didn't do it too much. So now, how is the? I like it. That I could just more like that. No, not doing it. How was the accuracy? And honestly, it was uh, okay. So I think the real problem is that if you look at this sight picture, first of all, it's not adjustable. This sight picture is kind of tiny, and that's just how Colt single action actions actions are. It shoots just a tad bit low for me. However, the left to right seems pretty good. And this is me shooting at 25 yards. So you have one, two, three. This is five shot groups. Um, two of them are gone. And this is, again, five shots. One, two, three, four, five. So I don't know what happened to that two of these are off target. All of these are accounted for, however, the group is not very good. So I'm having trouble, maybe it's me, I'm having trouble getting some good longer range accuracy out of this. However, when you back it up a little bit to 10 yards, 10 yards, 10 shots, that's fine. And then seven yards, that should be, uh, that, I shouldn't have let that happen, that's me. Uh, seven yards, five shots. That's more practical. That's more uh, what do you expect. So because the sights are kind of tiny, it's hard for me to get good longer range and 25 yard accuracy out of this. However, um, I'm going to say it's more of just me having trouble with the sights and the gun being, being mechanically inaccurate. I'm going to say it's just a problem with the sights, not the gun, which uh, is part of the gun, but... You do. So I do like the gun so far. I've had it a relatively short amount of time. Um, 
I think I have less less than 200 rounds to it. So that's not a really good long long time long duration uh, review. More of a first shots. Now a gun like this, are there any accessories you can put on this gun? And the answer is pretty much no. Uh, because, well, the rear sight is basically milled to the frame. I guess the front sight might be replaceable. However, there's nothing that makes me lead me to believe that it could be replaced. So basically the gun comes as is. The only thing you really change is maybe the grips. I asked Ubert Uberti if I could put a 357 Magnum cylinder in here. Because 357 Magnum is like two one thousandths of an inch bigger. And I suspected that it's possible that Uberti just used 357 Magnum barrels. I was like, hey, can I just pop a 357 Magnum barrel in here, uh, cylinder in here? And they said, no, uh, because these guns are hand fitted, please don't do that. I was like, oh, okay. So basically, with the exception of the grip, and I love the grip. Um, there's really no accessories for the gun itself. Now you can get holsters and things like that. This is a cheap Amazon holster that I got. I think it was like 50 or 60 dollars, which fits. It does work. This goes around, this, your bow goes through here and here. And then you tie this to your leg. And that's how that works. I don't think this thing actually does anything right here. I don't think this really puts much tension on the, the holster. So that's my cheap foray into some of these old West reproduction holsters, which can be kind of expensive. That's cool though, having that on your, on your hip, that's kind of cool. I think it is. It doesn't really, this particular, I think it's the holster, this doesn't go in and out particularly easily. It's not the smoothest draw. You see that this, maybe this leather isn't the best leather. So yeah, this is not the most practical gun. What do I see a gun like this being used for? And first and foremost, I think this is a range gun. This is a fun gun. Um, could you do other things with this? I'm sure. I mean, is it a home defense gun? I would say no. I mean, there's so many other options. Even if you live in a place like New Jersey where you're restricted to 10 rounds, uh, this is restricted to 6. Um, you can load 6. If I, I believe you can load 6. I didn't mention that. Uh, because of the free floating firing pin. This modern accommodation that you can't have a fully loaded uh, revolver and it should not go off if you smack it this way. However, uh, maybe test that. I have not. Uh, I think the first form is just a range gun. It's a fun gun. If you do that, that um, you know, cowboy action shooting, notice how the, if you can't see it, the trigger is slightly offset to the left for right handed shooters. So if you were left handed, this might be a little bit awkward for you because it's going to be slightly offset for you and a little bit in. But this is very good for a right-handed shooter. Um, I don't consider this a hunting gun or a home defense gun or anything. Any serious use, really. Uh, I consider this a range gun, a fun gun. And that's what makes this review kind of easy for me because I don't recommend it for serious use. This is a toy. Well, I don't say toy, but it's an expensive toy. A little scratch there. So in that roll, I can wholeheartedly recommend the Uberti El Patron in 9mm because I think that it's a pretty well-made gun. Now, I had a little bit of reliability issues out of the box, but I think as I shoot it, the better it gets. I don't think I'm going to have to send this one back, even though I've done that twice with my, my Cimarron Model P and my um, Heritage Rough Rider revolver. I don't think we have to do that with this one. Uh, it's less expensive to shoot because 9mm is easy to, easier to find. 9mm, I think I bought this for $15 a box as opposed to 45 Colt, which is $60 a box. So uh, a quarter of the price, literally a fraction, a quarter of the price to shoot this over 45 Colt. And honestly, uh, I don't really mind the difference because 45 Colt is more powerful, but if I'm just shooting a paper, I don't care. And I think that will just about cover it. Yep. Definitely can recommend the Uberti, Uberti El Patron as I see it right now. This has been Steven from the Even Steven channel. Please do all that like, share, and subscribe. I will answer comments and questions in the comments the best I can. And I will see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.